Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. Everyone, this is Ringside Rain, and you're listening to Can Crushers Podcast. And now, here is your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. And welcome back to another Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast, the Spotlight Edition. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez, and I am super excited to be here today to bring you another amazing interview with. Someone in the Indies that is taking over. I- I'm telling you, she is all over the place, and she's making a huge name for herself. So, of course, Mark has to be the Mark that he is. Reach out, grab her, and say, hey, come on on the show, and let's talk about your career, what's going on, and let's just chat wrestling, because that's what Mark loves. So, third person again. I don't know why. My guest today, if you can't tell by the thumbnail, is the glamorous, amorous Blair. Yes, yes, she is the first ever Diamond Championship Wrestling Women's Champion. Yeah, a lot to talk about with her, and I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil anything like I do sometimes, but you'll just hear it in the interview. We have to take care of the other stuff first. Call her an elbow. Make sure you go and check them out. Shirts are coming out fast and furious from Al Snow and the hooligans down there at Call Her an Elbow. When you buy something, use the promo code CANCRUSHERS, capital C and CAN, capital C and CRUSHERS, all one word. You will save 10% on your order, your entire order. So that's shipping and handling, essentially. So that's pretty cool. Wherever you're listening now, we're on a million other uh, outlets, Spotify, iTunes, iHeart, Google Play, Stitcher. The list can go on and on and on. Make sure you like, you follow, you share. And if you can rate on any of those, make sure you rate us. That's awesome. It really helps us out. It gives us that uptick to the next level. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's all at CanCrusher69. Join the discussions. They're fun. Uh They don't get heated. Everybody just likes talking. We're a calm, cool, collective type of guy, unless we're talking about insert mean wrestler for the week. And if you want to be part of the show, reach out to us via those DMs or cancrusher69 at gmail.com. So, yeah, that's all the stuff that we have to take care of today. Al Snow is going to tell you more about Collar and Elbow, and then we come back, we'll have the glamorous, Amorous Blair on the line to talk about wrestling. That's what we do on Camp Crushers. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Welcome back to Can Crushers Podcast, guys. I told you how excited I was in the start of this show to talk to my guest. Again, she is the first ever DCW Women's Champion. 
She's amazing. She's beautiful. But more so than that, she is the glamorous one, Amorous Blair. Amorous, Hi. welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much. How are you doing tonight? I'm really good. How are you? Well, well it's pouring here, but uh, I'm inside, so it's okay. <laughs> Before we get to wrestling, and this is the the forty five year old dad thing, and I, I, Amorous, tell me about that name. Like it's it is beautiful. I, I love it. Your parents are amazing. Thank you. Uh, so basically, it was like a friend of my mom and dad's. Um, she had actually uh, passed away in a car accident, and they used to work out together and all of that stuff. And my mom always said, like, first daughter she had, she would name her Amorous, and so I was named after my mom's friend. <sighs> That's awesome. I just got chills. I told you. It's, I'm cheesy, too. So that's that's awesome. Um, shout out to mom. Uh, pat on the mm-hmm. back there. All right. Let's get into the, all the wrestling questions. I know you have, but just for people that don't know who you are, let's run through those real quick and then get silly. Um, okay. Who first introduced you to professional wrestling? Oh, God. Okay. So I... I've always been, like, a really big fan of wrestling, like, since I was really young. Like, I used to play games on, like, the Nintendo 64 with my older brother when I was, like, five. And so it kind of started off as that. Like, my cousins were really into it. And then I went to, like, my first indie show when I was probably, like, eight or nine. Like, my dad had brought me and my cousins and my brother. And then uh, I used to watch, like, CM Punk, just, like, segments, like, him and uh, Rey Mysterio in WWE, their feud, that was, like, what first, like, really hooked me into actually watching, um, and so I started watching that, and then whenever I was 11, that's when I really got into it, like, every single week, like, watching it, like, all of the merch, like, everything, money to go to, like, all of the indie shows, and yeah, ever since then, I've been hooked. Did you go to an indie show before you went to, because AEW wasn't around, and I don't know if it, if Impact came down to your neck of the woods or anything, but did you go to an indie show before, like, a WWE event? Yep. Uh, yeah, I went to my first indie show when I was nine, and then I started going to them consistently when I was 11. I didn't go to my first, like, WWE show till I was, like, 12 or 13, I think. Wow. Uh- I'm telling you, I gra- like graduated in 95 from high school. I knew nothing about indies prior to, I don't know, maybe 12, 15 years ago. Like, it was just, it. you didn't know. I mean, because they were so, now with everything out there, IWTV and high spots and uh, title match, like, now you get to see great wrestling on those, great independent wrestling. So it's awesome. Yeah, My, for my sure. childhood like did not now, have that. Yeah, I think, like, now they have, obviously, like, we have so much social media and stuff like that, so it's a lot easier. Um, uh, there was, like, indie shows that would run, like, 40 minutes from my house and it was the town that my dad worked in. And so he knew about like all of the stuff that would run. And so like that was closer than driving like the hour and a half to new Orleans for like raw or SmackDown. Dad, a big wrestling fan as well. He was, yes, he was like the biggest wrestling fan. I got him into it mostly. Um, cause I'd always have it on TV like Monday nights. Um, and so I'd be like, dad, like you have to watch this with me. And so then I, he was the one bringing me to all of these shows, brought me a mania 30, like all of that. Nice, nice. All right, so so you named some of your favorites already. Clearly, Punk and yes. Ray. Um, the women's side. And by the way, I'm going to ask you who you are in a little bit, but don't answer right off the bat because I think I have you pegged from watching some of your um, matches and highlights and everything. I think I know exactly, and I'm going to be that guy today. I think I know exactly <laughs> who you are, so awesome. Uh, but the women's side, who are some of your favorites? Uh, definitely AJ Lee and Paige. If you couldn't tell by like my vibe, like I know I go like the whole pageant queen thing, but also like all my tattoos and like, I'm not your typical, like pageant queen. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay. So you go through school and you have a hidden talent as well. I don't know if it's that hidden and we'll talk about it in a little bit, but you go through (laughs) school, you discover, discover some other things. How is wrestling then wrap back around to say, screw it, I'm I'm doing this? Um, so I remember like going through high school because I kind of stopped wanting to be a wrestler for a little bit. Like it wasn't like a huge interest to me. Like to me, I still wanted to be in the business, but not as a performer. Um, and so for a while I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, went through like a billion different things because people were always asking like, oh, what do you want to do once you graduate high school? And I was like, oh God, I don't know. And so then whenever, 
I think it was like I was 17, maybe I started going back to indie shows. And then I was like, you know what, I still want to do this. And so ever since then, I was just like set on it. And then where was your did you did you do some research or did you go to the first you know training school that you found? Okay, so it's actually kind of a funny story. So I was, uh, I had, my phone had broke. So I went to the Apple store and I was talking to the guy that uh, was fixing my phone and I was wearing like a wrestling shirt. And he's like, oh, there's actually like a guy here that like that works here that is like huge into wrestling. Like he actually is like a manager for like a local promotion. He's like, I'll get him over and like you guys can like talk. And I was like, okay, cool. So we talked and um, he was like, yeah, we actually run shows like, you know, this place, which is literally the indie shows that I used to go to when I was a kid. And he's like, I'd love for you to like come out to a show and meet a couple of the guys. And, you know, we can like talk more about you training. And so like, it was like a week later, I go to the show, I talk to a couple of the wrestlers. And then I literally just like started training before shows, like I just get in the ring for like an hour. And then I did that for a few months. And then eventually I was told about Elevate Pro in New Orleans, which was only like an hour and a half drive for me. And then so as soon as I could, I started training there instead because it was a more like consistent, you know, program. No knock on to where you went. If you don't want to mention, that's fine. Um, yeah, Elevate Pro. Uh, we, we know everybody knows about Elevate Pro now. So I, yeah. I do want to talk about that a little bit. But all that from wearing a wrestling shirt into an Apple store. That's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> Do you remember what shirt yeah. you had on? Oh, God, no, I don't know. Oh, see. I have no idea. It might have been, like, my WrestleMania 30 shirt, because that's the only thing that I can, like, think that I would have been wearing at the time, because I still wasn't, like, I'd gotten out of wrestling for, like, three or four years, and that was, like, the only shirt that I would really wear. I listen to you flex about going to WrestleMania 30 twice. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm yeah, kidding. whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> that's, that's all right. So you make your way to Elevate Pro, which is yeah. uh, top-notch, one of the finest. It, it, so talk about that a little bit because is that where you had your first match then from Elevate Pro? Yeah, because yeah. you're also uh, a COVID baby. Right? Not COVID baby, but COVID wrestling baby, right? You had to oh, take absolutely. a year off. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I was in training and then we had to take like some time off and it was like the worst. Cause it was, I was literally about to have my debut match and then COVID happened and I was like, Oh cool. Like I have to wait even longer. And so I didn't debut until May of last year. Wow. I, I thought it was maybe a little bit sooner, maybe like January. Or so, I mean, nonetheless, it's still, we round here because we're not good with numbers. So essentially <laughs> you're two years into business. Yeah. Okay. Well, like the thing is, is, like Louisiana was not allowed to run shows for a while. Um, so like the Elevate show that I worked for my first match was actually out in Mississippi. Oh, OK. Yeah, because yeah. Elevate wasn't or like Louisiana wrestling wasn't allowed to come back until I'd say like summer, late summer of last year. That was that's Pennsylvania as well. Pennsylvania. Really? We did nothing. We all just clamored yeah. for her. We were watching VCR tapes. Yeah. If you remember what those are. And if you do, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I do know what those are. Thank you. All right. <laughs> You're young. You're not 45 year old garbage man. So I, I am young. Yes. Um, training. When you went, let's talk about the training at Elevate Pro. When you went, how different was it when from when you started at the other one? And was there ever that moment? And be real. That you're like, oh, this is this is a lot different than I thought. Maybe I'm tapping out. Um, okay. So like compared to where I first started, cause where I first started, I was just like for months and months, I was kind of just learning the very, very basic stuff like bumps and rolls. And then I go to this, uh, like I go to elevate and it was like a Saturday practice. So it wasn't like their consistent, like program thing that they were doing. It was literally just like, Hey, this is Saturday. We're just going to have fun. So literally I went from like bumps and rolls to like literally doing Lucha stuff on a random Saturday uh at elevate wow. and so it was a very wild like welcoming into elevate and like i loved it and so it was a lot different there but it was also like um just the way that they went about it was different uh we had like drills on one day and then just like move sets and stuff on another and i think like what scared me was like i was held not held back but it was just like doing the absolute basic to like hey like you should do like a five minute match tonight in training and that was terrifying to me because like I didn't know how to do a match like I had no idea what I was doing and so like I mean it was good that they did that because it really pushes you to learn more right um but it was very scary to like go from doing the absolute basics to you need to work a match 
yeah, from as you just said, basics to you know lucha style. There's yeah. people ten years into the business, and I'm not disrespecting anybody that can't make that that uh, shift or that change to right. lucha is completely different from headlocks and arm bars, and you know it's right. yeah. So if you just switch it, what's your background then? Because you clearly have a background in high school of gymnastics, dance, something like that. Yeah, so I uh, I was a dancer, like a ballet dancer, hip hop, all of that stuff from seven years old till I was about nineteen, uh-huh. I believe. Okay, it explains it. You know, you understand steps, and I I hate to say that about wrestling, but come on, mm-hmm. folks, it's twenty twenty two. We know there's steps. You know, so it's yep. it's essentially a dance partner. Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, dancing definitely helped me in the sense of wrestling, but it also, believe it or not, and a lot of people don't believe this, it also, um, I had to unlearn a lot of stuff from dancing. Like dancing, I was always up on my toes, wrestling, like you can't be doing that. Um, and so there was a lot of, like, I was very gentle with my moving and wrestling's the opposite. And so there was a lot of stuff that was drilled in my head for like, 12, 13 years in dancing that I had to like completely unlearn because it was like, okay, that's not going to, that's not going to fly in wrestling, but dancing also helped me a lot as far as like flexibility goes. And then, yeah, I mean, just like, you know, remembering stuff and just, yeah, I mean, it definitely helped, but it also like in a way held me back uh, as far as like having to unlearn so many things. Yeah. 12 years compared to two as we keep rounding. Um, it's hard to, to shut that off. I, I, right. It, there's probably a possibility that you still do it once in a while now, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Besides that, what was the hardest thing for you in the in training? Was it the ropes? Was it the bumps? Was it the psychology, you know, top rope stuff? Clearly not that because you're flying around like a lunatic now. So, okay. Yeah, I was I was doing all types of crazy stuff whenever I first started. So, um Oh God, I don't know. I think like bumping was very scary for me whenever I first, cause I mean, it's, it's so unnatural. You're literally having to like throw yourself back. And, um, so that was a bit difficult, but eventually, cause I was like the original ring that I trained in was like not the softest. And so like, I mean, it was kind of scary, like knowing <laughs> how, you know, hard that impact would be, but eventually I was able to like hype myself up to do it. And once I got it, I, I mean, I had it down, you know? Um, running the ropes. I mean, it was a little difficult because of my height, cause I'm only like five, three. So depending on the ring, it's not like the easiest. <laughs> right. Um, but I don't know. I think the psychology was definitely the hardest. I still, um, am kind of trying to understand psychology. It's like just so more, like so much more like in depth than people realize. And you have to put so much thought into it. And I really like, I think a lot of fans don't realize like how much work really goes into that aspect of it. So I definitely think psychology was definitely the hardest. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because uh, let me ask this and I'll give you kind of like my sidebar. What defines a good match for you then? I'm telling a story. Okay. For sure, see, telling exactly. a story. I mean, so many people just want to, I know offense to these people because I understand it, but so many people want to just like do flip, and move after move and just like all of that stuff. But I just think like what drags me in and like makes me feel like a fan again will always be people telling a story in the ring. Right. Uh, I think some of the greatest one-off matches Mm -hmm. have some of the greatest stories in them. It's just trying. So I I agree with you. So you're, you're an old soul then because a lot of Mm -hmm. the younger group likes the flippy and fly stuff. I can take it once in a while but I can't take it yeah. every match. Right. Yeah. I mean, I like to do a lot of like head scissors and hurricane ranas and stuff like that, obviously. But I also like, whenever I'm studying wrestling, I like to go back and watch a lot of like eighties and nineties stuff just because it's, it's more captivating to me. Like, don't get me wrong. I still enjoy watching all of the flippy stuff, but I just feel like, um, yeah, just storytelling captivates me more. Uh, so you get your first match after a yeah. year off and everything nerves and what's going through your head um okay so like i like once i you know we had that that time off i was under the impression like oh like i'm never gonna have this first match like literally like i don't know when this is ever gonna happen and then like my trainer tells me it was like I think it was like January or something like that of last year my trainer tells me hey you're having your debut match in May you need to like put all of your effort 
into this because you're having this match. And like, so I was just coming back from like an injury because we had started training back in like fall of 2020 and I had actually broken my foot in training. Oh, and so I had just came back from that in like January, February, something like that. And so I was like trying to be really careful. And then I was like, Hey, you're having like your first match. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I have to put literally all my effort into this. So it was like scary mentally because I had taken that time off, not because of, like, not just because of COVID, but also because of my injury. And so it was like, mentally, I had to really prepare for this. And, um, but it, I had just waited so long. Cause I mean, I started training back in 2018. And so, I mean, I was just like, so ready for this to finally happen. Um, I wish I would have gotten a little more time, uh, because I felt like it would, I feel like it would have helped me a little bit more. Um, but I mean, I always appreciate having that first match, you know, did you have by your way, by the way, folks, her first match was with, uh, one of our can crusher alums, um, Amber Rodriguez, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So Amber's been on the show, uh, amazing human being, right? Yeah, she's great. You, you she's know, awesome. know her. I, I'm going to throw you under the bus. You like know, know her, and she's amazing. Yeah, we've been on it. We've road tripped a lot. Yeah. Um. So, did you have with this being sprung on you right off the bat? Did you have your gear and, and stuff ready, or was it like scrambling even to make yourself, you know, the diva, the princess, the the queen that you are? Okay, so funny story. So my first year, because I was doing like battle royals and stuff back in like 2019. Um, so I had like this gear somewhat made. It was literally like a little dance costume, obviously. Um, and like I had my name on it. And so I had that. It was it was bedazzled and it was cute enough. But I had literally got like I wanted like legit gear, you know, like I wanted like bright colors and all that stuff. I literally got my gear in two or three days before the show. Wow. Yeah. And like, I had to make a couple of changes to it. So like, I get it in the mail. I try it on. I'm like, oh my God, it's a little too big. I literally find someone that can take it in and I get it back the day before the show. That's, that's lucky. If you got it two or three days before and you get it the day, you know, that's a, yeah. essentially a day and a half turnaround. Shout out yeah, to your was, seamstress. It was very, <laughs> it was very nerve wracking. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing uh, that they can actually get it back in time. Cause I was like, I just need this by Friday, please. Like I have to drive like four hours away. Like I need it. And they, yeah, they did it. Family come out to the first show. Yep. Yep. Uh, they're, they're all in, they, they go to all your shows and just are always front row. Like I picture your mom, like punching somebody. If she hurts a little, oh, yeah, my, my mom comes to just about every show that she can. Like if it's like an eight hour road trip, she will absolutely be with me. Like she loves coming out to support me. Like my siblings, my older brother actually has never watched a match of mine. Um, he doesn't really like wrestling. So I'm trying bum, to one bum. day maybe. What a bum. <laughs> I know, but my my little brother, my little sister, and her boyfriend even they're um, they're at every show that's like you know within the within like two three hours of us. That's awesome. That that see that's wrestling is family. Like it really oh, yeah. is. So, all right. So this is a question I I forewarned you about. Like who is glamorous glamorous amorous Blair? Um, I have you, and I always give you three people. Okay. I, I have Cand okay. Candice Lerae. Okay. I have Carmella, and then okay. clearly you've mentioned him a million times. It's Ray Jr. How close? Honestly, it's very close. So I just met Candice LeRae like a week and a half ago, and I told her how much she inspires me as a wrestler. She's actually the reason that I want to do like more hardcore stuff and the reason I want to do intergender wrestling. Um, so that was very spot on. Um, Carmella is actually definitely an inspiration. Uh, and then Ray, yes, for sure, because of like – his height and I'm also really short. So that's um, definitely accurate. I think like for me, how I describe myself is um, Daniel Bryan, because I use a lot of his stuff in the ring, uh, his finisher, like the cattle mutilation, I literally use as a finisher. Um, Alexa Bliss. She's like been one of my favorites since like 2017. And then uh, Sasha Banks was also a huge inspiration for me and my character. So I wasn't close then i was so i was both, around the ballpark on. those were spot on but the way that i personally would like okay. for someone else to describe me like that it's very spot on but the way that i would describe myself was those three because of just like i mean my gear my character uh my in-ring work all of that stuff okay 
But yours oh. were very, very accurate. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Lucky. Lucky sometimes. <laughs> um, can you watch wrestling for enjoyment or is it always just tape study right now? Um, for the most part, it's honestly just tape study. Um, I, even if it's like a bad match that I see, I'm like, I don't know, AEW dark or something. I'm still like picking things apart. And like, I, it's very hard for me to watch wrestling as a fan, which I'm sure like literally every other wrestler can relate. Um, it's very difficult because I will immediately like, Oh, this is probably coming next. Or like, Oh, I like this move set. And I want to use that. It's just very difficult to like separate it. Um, there are like a few times where I can watch like a match and just have that like that moment of like, oh my god, I love wrestling so much, like I feel like a fan again. Um, specifically, like this happens at indie shows a lot. Um, not every <laughs> indie like promotion, but like specifically, I'm gonna give a shout out to New Next uh, New Texas Pro, my boyfriend's promotion. Um, one of the best in Texas, and uh, we have a lot of good matches there uh like mysterious q brian keith people like that they always know how to put on such a good match there, there you go I, I love the shout out as well uh by the way fyi my boyfriend's gonna be on the show in about a month or so <laughs> so once everything squares away with him so uh we'll get that worked out all right let's take a let's take a break a little bit from wrestling okay. and know more about amorous herself um okay. legit beauty pageant right for young beauty, not, or I don't know. Are you doing it now? Oh no, I w- I don't. I don't think I would ever go back to it. Uh, I did it whenever I was like, I literally started probably when I was like six months old, um, till maybe like five or six years old. Trophies, all that. Trophies, crowns, like thirty something crowns, like probably a hundred sashes, all of the things. Wow! And, and mom just trucked you everywhere, right? Yep. That's. Yep. My mom's like been my biggest fan like my entire life. It that I see this is why I love talking to indie stuff. Everybody knows stuff about Randy Orton and this, that, and the other thing. I always use him. I love hearing this. And it's just like so much that your family's in your life. And we beat that on our weekly shows all the time between mental health and, you know, families, everything. Yeah. We always bring that back around. And it just means so much to hear that because I have had wrestlers on saying yeah, once I told mom and dad I'm going to be a wrestler, they cut me out of the will, and then I feel yeah. horrible. I'm like, is that really something to lose a family member about? No. I know. It's crazy. It is crazy. Like, a lot of people don't have, like, that support system um, that I have, so I am, like, always so, so grateful to have what I do. So what do you do? This is – what do you do on your off days? You you don't go to training, which that is far and few between, I'm sure, but you yeah. just have a bum day. What are you doing? Oh, I am either uh, on Netflix, on TikTok, or scrolling through Reddit. Or annoying my boyfriend. One of those <laughs> well, four. That's, between everything you just said, they all annoy your boyfriend, by the way. Oh, I, absolutely. I love you, but he is annoyed by Reddit, TikTok, and scrolling through Netflix. Just pick something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know, for sure. <laughs> Uh, video games, reading, uh, anime, stuff like that? Um, I play Animal Crossing on my Nintendo Switch. That's the only gaming that I do. Just Animal Crossing. You, you need yes. to meet my wife then because that's the only thing she <laughs> plays as well. That's all. I, I just don't understand it. I don't – I'm a sports guy, so I just – you're just fishing all the time it seems like. Or that's all I see yeah. her doing. Yeah, you just fish, you catch bugs, um, sell things, build things. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I do know you kind of have a special talent that uh, if wrestling, you know, it's going to. But I'm just saying if wrestling doesn't ever happen, yeah, you're going to be on the red carpet for makeup, right? Yeah. Like you are unbelievable. The stuff oh, that you post. You. Yeah. Have you thought about coming out painted face ever? Like, uh, people bring that up to me all the time, but I, okay, so no offense to the, the Joker gimmicks in the indie world, but I feel like they have so many painted faces, specifically on the indies. I, I, and so I just don't, I just don't think that I would ever be for me personally. Um, if someone ever needed me to do, 
a painted face on someone else or like a special effects face, then I would do it for someone else. I would not do it on myself. It just doesn't like, at first I wanted to because of the fact that I know how to do makeup, but it's just not my vibe. See, I was thinking, I was definitely not thinking Joker face with you. No, I was thinking like a <laughs> over the wall, huge pomp and circumstance, like Mardi Gras. I was bringing it back to your, your I'm not, roots. I'm not against that. I'm not against that. Yeah. See, um, I kind of, I, so I, whenever I first started with the whole pageant queen thing and wrestling, um, I wanted to stay away from anything to do with my roots. And then people in commentary started making jokes about me being Cajun, which is not necessarily a joke. Um, and so it started bringing all this like New Orleans, Louisiana stuff into it. So I guess like maybe one day I do want to get like Mardi Gras inspired gear. I and mean, then that'd be really dope. Okay. Um, yeah. I wasn't saying so, Cajun, but yeah. I, I was sticking with New Orleans. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's like basically the same thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be against it. So how often did you go to um, Bourbon Street and everything? Oh, God, never. It's so dangerous out there. R- never? Yeah, I – oh, I haven't been to Bourbon since – I mean, as someone who, like, lives close by, like, Bourbon is just, like, too touristy. Um, so I haven't been to Bourbon since probably, like, 2018. Wow. I, first and foremost, I don't, I've I don't never walk been. walk around like the first quarter, but uh, if you go to New Orleans, you avoid bourbon. Okay. Because it's dangerous. That's that's good. To, I did yes, not it's, know it's that. it's super dangerous. Avoid bourbon. Okay. Deal. Any other special things, talent, or, you know, you're from Louisiana. There's stories of critters and everything. Are, are you into all that? Uh, no, I absolutely hate critters. A frog jumped on my foot yesterday and I almost cried. So <laughs> that explains anything about me. <laughs> you're not gator hunting or anything like that, right? I couldn't see you in the boat anyway, gator hunting, right? Yeah, no. So people always like, so there was actually a, a baby gator that lives in my backyard somewhat um, a couple years ago. And so these people uh, on this one particular promotion on commentary like to make jokes about how I have a pet gator and so they actually bought me like a little gator stuffed animal and so I kind of always joke about like carrying it out to the ring with me I'm kind of like in a princess and the frog type of way but it would be me and my gator all right a couple would you rather or this or that questions and then we'll wrap back into uh some wrestling um would you rather go uh girls day you know spa tanning all that stuff with the beautiful people or toxic attraction Oh, I don't even know. Hmm. That's difficult. Yeah, these are the stupid questions that it gets everybody knotted up on. Yeah. Okay. That's a difficult question. Okay. Who would you rather? Oh, uh, the beautiful people. I, I'm I don't know if I'm a huge fan of toxic attraction. But I kinda went like old school and NXT that everybody knows right now, so yeah, I think the beautiful people, I mean, I know, like, uh, one of the girls in Toxic Attra- Attraction, like, I, she was one of the first, like, wrestlers that I met uh, on the indies, um, so, I mean, I guess it would be cool for them, but, I mean, either way, that would be a vibe. Okay. If you could have a match, and this one was set up big time, okay. against Jeff Hardy in a ladder match, or CM Punk in a first blood match, which one are you oh, picking? Okay. First blood, CM Punk, first blood, absolutely. Yeah. You have a deep passion for CM Punk. So yeah. he was my first – I have a whole sleeve of wrestling logos going on now, uh, and Punk was mm-hmm. the first one that I got because I'm sure you marked out as I marked out when he returned to AEW and just go yep. crazy. Yeah. Uh, like Punk yeah. is my – between Punk and Owen Hart, they're one and one A. So Yeah. All right, so I kind of know the answer to this, but I'm still going to answer it. Crawdads or gator meat? Which one do you like better? Uh, crawdads for sure. I do like gator, though. Yeah, okay. I had gator for the first time like three years ago. I, I thought it was amazing, but you can do yeah, so much like more I, with crawdads. Yeah, I like – whenever it's crawfish season, I basically live off of crawfish, so. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite, though, food? Because, like, Pennsylvania is – cheesesteaks and burgers and stuff like that what's your favorite dish Uh, um um, so there's this thing called crawfish pistolets it's basically like bread and then it's like this cheese sauce mixed with 
um, crawfish. I mean, they have like just like seafood, so you could do like crab meat, crawfish, and shrimp. But it's basically just mixed with this cheese sauce, and it's poured over bread and cooked like that, and it's the most amazing thing ever. That sounds um, yeah, that sounds amazing. So it's great. I, I need to make a trip down. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get back into wrestling a little bit more. Um, tell me about your most embarrassing moment so far in wrestling. <laughs> um, oh, God. Okay, so one of my first matches, um, I my gear was kind of ill-fitting, and so I was leaned over the second rope. This girl was, like, hitting me or whatever, and there was a nip slip that happened, and so that was pretty embarrassing. Um that was probably my most embarrassing moment. I kind of just like, I'm like, whatever about it now. But at the time I like, was like, Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Um, that was probably my most embarrassing moment. Um, but I'm trying to think I've had so many like moments where I've like been unhappy with <laughs> what happened, but I don't even know if I can like pinpoint any right now. But yeah, the, the whole nip slip situation was uh, not a fun time. Definitely didn't think I was going to get that today. I thought you were going to say, oh, I meant to do a headlock and I did a drop kick or something like that. I don't, like, not even know how to drop kick, brother. <laughs> so, no, we we're talking. All right. Um, can you step back and look at the little girl, watch wrestling with your cousins? They're playing, you know, NWO versus WCW or whatever on the N64. Yep, it was. It was. Was it really? Which is still yeah, by one, one of the greatest games out there. I, I don't care. Yeah, I still play it. I still play it. Do you really? Nice. Yep. Do you play anything like new, uh, like 2K20 or, or anything like that? Um, I used to buy 2K every year for my Xbox, but I haven't even touched my Xbox in a while. So. Animal Crossing or nothing. That's it. That's yeah, not... absolutely. <laughs> That's it. Um, can you step back with that, that little girl that first watched wrestling and kind of like hover over her and say, holy moly, uh, I made it. Uh, I'm doing the same thing that AJ and Paige and Punk and all these guys have done. This is me now. It's actually like a very difficult thing for me to do. And I've had like this talk with so many people and it's just like in my personal life and in wrestling, it, it's very difficult to realize um, that I'm doing what I, I've always dreamed of. Uh, it's like almost like imposter syndrome. Like I don't recognize that this is my life. Like I feel like it's not. And so and it's kind of crazy when I, I do have those moments of like, this is literally what I've dreamed of for like years and years. So it is a very cool thing whenever I can actually recognize it. But I mean, I'm sure other wrestlers can like, you know, relate. It, it's hard to to realize that yeah. you've accomplished what you've always wanted. Wait, but you feel you feel that like you're accomplished, right? Uh, not always. Sometimes I like I don't realize it. it's just like one of those. It has to be like. If I have like a really good match, like something that I'm really proud of, I'll have those moments of like, okay, I, you know, like I feel accomplished. Like my match with Rachel Rose in, uh, in Houston, that was a match that I had wanted since I started wrestling and I had it. And I just like, I mean, it's like a match that I'm most proud of. And so like, I got to the back and it was just kind of one of those things of like, wow, I like, I, I did that, you know? And so it's not always that I can feel accomplished with what I'm doing, but I do have those little moments. And can you look at yourself, and this is the one that I don't try, but sometimes it happens, yeah. that, that you're somebody's hero now. You are you are you to what AJ Lee was to you. You are you to what Paige was to you. Because you know there's, I don't want to say little boys or girls, anything, you know, men, whatever, women, you are somebody's hero. Can you, can that, can your mind wrap yourself around that? Like you are inspiring the next, next generation of wrestlers. Um, it's very, very difficult to, like, even, like, realize that, like, that I, you know, like, the people that I once looked up to, like, I'm that for, you know, little kids. And uh, I actually had a moment where I was at a show uh, just a few months ago, and this little girl, like, probably, like, seven or eight years old came up to me, and she said that, like, she wanted to do what I do, like, one day, and that I was her favorite wrestler. And, like, I literally went back to the locker room and I cried over that because I just thought that was, like, the most meaningful thing just to have, like, this little girl come up to you at a show and, like, have her say that you're her inspiration. And, you know, she wants to do that one day because of you. Yeah, that's – it hits home, right? It, it's like, holy oh, cow, I touched one per- – you always hear a few, like – change the life of one person in your life, you win yeah. this game of life. Oh, yeah. You did Absolutely. that already. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that should be 
because I'm going to ask you what is your proud, proudest moment in wrestling, but that's a pretty freaking proud moment that you should oh, never hang your head at. Yeah, that was, it was such an, it is such an awesome moment. Like I was, um, I was a little down because I had just kind of injured myself. And so I was like, still like wrestling on the injury, but I was pretty discouraged of just like wrestling in general. And that was going to be like my last show before I took like the two month break that I just came back from. And so I was feeling really down. And so to have like someone like that come up to me and tell me that like, it really helped me kind of get through just knowing that I was going to have to, you know, take those few months off. What is, what is your proudest moment then in, in professional wrestling aside from that? Uh, like best match that you think or whatever. I know you talked about Rachel's match. Yeah, I definitely think me and Rachel is my proudest moment uh, in wrestling. Um, I'm just so happy with that match. Like I said, I mean, I met her back in, I think maybe June of last year, like right after I, like the first time I ever traveled out of state for wrestling and I met her and I just remember like watching her matches and just thinking like, I want to wrestle her one day and like, I mean, since then, she's literally become, like, one of my closest friends. And then, like, we got booked against each other. I think it was in April of this year. And I remember just being so excited for it. And, like, she – you have these people that you wrestle that bring out the best in you, that bring out the best in your character, in, like, your in-ring work, everything. And I definitely think Rachel is that for me. So she's your – however you say it, your flair – in your steamboat or your Brett in your uh, Sean Michaels, or she's just going to be somebody that, you know, any match is going to be fluent and you're of course always protected this, that and the other, but you can't have a bad match with her. You already right. feel it. Right. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome to know at this stage in your career. And hopefully you guys, you know, wrap back around and it's a story for, so much more down the line, and it, and you can always pinpoint it back to that. Yeah, for sure. Can, what advice do you did you give that little girl? By the way, that I should have said that back when you were talking about it. What advice did you give that little girl about getting into wrestling or life, essentially? Um, I just told her like just you know like keep attending shows and just like keep fighting for it like no matter like who tries to discourage you from it because I dealt with so many people telling me that like you're not going to become a wrestler like that's that's stupid especially like I come from like a very small town and so I had so many people so many small town people telling me like you're never gonna like make it out of here like you're not gonna do that that's such a weird thing to want to do and so I just told her like don't let anyone tell you that Don't, don't let anyone discourage you because I let it discourage me and um yeah i mean just ignore those people because for for those people you're also going to have those people that are like going to ride or die for you you know for sure for sure that that's great life advice wrestling kind of still has once in a while maybe in certain areas this like stigma um of many but yeah. if you could change one thing in wrestling that you could just boom your wand takes care of all the stupidness in wrestling what would be your number one issue uh, i guess yeah issue is the best word that you would like it just to be gone um probably the stigma of women's wrestling i now you're gonna get me mad uh mm-hmm. and i'm backing you that's why i'm gonna get mad the yeah. the whole pandemic time for wwe or aew because it was kind of the only thing running the women right. carried the whole pandemic when wrestling was shut down. So people were yeah. stupid between mm-hmm. Sasha and Bailey and Oscar and then Brit and Thunder and on the other side, they yeah. carried the pandemic. Right. So women, uh, women's wrestling. We also like to say wrestling, and I understand yeah. because I'm I'm huge on that. You guys wrestle. There there shouldn't be men's wrestling and women's wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I- I'm high on that. So you hit a point right now. I agree. Right. There, there should not be that stigma anymore because there's women yeah. out there outshining Roman and yeah. everybody else. Like, it's insane because, like, I mean, I still see promotions that refuse to even, like, have women's matches or, like, they'll have, like, one or, like, you know, every few shows. Like, I don't understand why we can't be having, like, at least two women's matches per show. Minimum. Too and it, yeah, it, and don't tuck them after the intermission or anything when people aren't back in their seats. Showcase right. them. You can, have, you can have like seven 
men's matches and you're gonna have like one women's match i just don't think it's like fair like you can at least like try to like you know even it out just a little bit yeah and there's there's enough uh women's wrestlers i had to use that word right there there's enough women out there that wrestle that Mm -hmm. are wanting to travel that you know you're in louisiana and hopefully you know the promoter needs to make the phone call they need to stop and bring you to Pennsylvania or New York or New Jersey or anything like that. Oh They're God. out there knocking on the door. Oh, God. Now you got me yep. fired up, Amaris. <laughs> Go ahead. Were you going to say something that got you off? Oh, no. You're fine. Okay. Um, goals for the rest of this year. What, what's your goals for the rest of this year? Um, As far as, like, shows and stuff go, I'm actually kind of, like, taking a little bit of a step back from – working shows for the rest of the year my goal right now is to focus back on training um I didn't like once I started taking bookings I honestly didn't get a lot of training um because it's hard like there's not really a lot of places to train where I'm at in Louisiana and so um I'm about to make the move out to Houston and I mean, they train like four days a week out there. And so that's kind of like what I want to be the main focus because I mean, I'm okay with my ring work, but I, I know that I can like always improve. And so I think it's very important for me right now to uh, focus on improving. Goal then, since you're heading out to Houston, um, Thunder Rosa's right there. Mission pro has to be one of your huge ones, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I I love Thunder Rosa. She's like one of the nicest people I've I've met in the business. Yeah. How about goals for? I don't like five years because things change. But how about two years? What's your major goals for two years then? Um, two years. I'd like to at least like be on like AEW Dark or something like once or twice, and then I would like to check off five more states. What are you at right now? Uh, I I just hit seven states uh, back in May. Nice, nice, good. I, that's huge. That really is. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, this is the one, and I'm gonna have a caveat for you because okay. young into the business, and I know you mentioned a lot of indie stars. So, first, give me your your dream match with a couple people working on the indies right now. Um, Sandra Moon is a really big one for me. She's such an amazing person. She is doing so many amazing things in the business. Um, Hyon is another person. Um, Hyon has honestly been like a huge inspiration for me in wrestling this year. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. That, those are my, like my big two. Uh, oh, and then Delilah Doom. I've been oh, a fan of Delilah. I love Doom. Delilah. Since probably 2017, I've been keeping up with her, her wrestling and she is literally probably just about the sweetest person I have met in wrestling. And so she is definitely another dream match for me. You, you brought up that you want to do a little bit more harder style or something like that. And yeah. my brain instantly went to, I want to see a match between you and dream girl. Ali. Oh, I'm actually, so I may be wrestling her in October. Oh. I'm not like 100% sure, but she was actually the first women's wrestler that I like legit met and hung out with. And so Ellie and I have wanted to work each other like for years now. Nice. Nice. Um, I don't want to ask you on here where it's going to happen, but we'll talk in a minute because okay. I'd love to see that. But all right, so you can go back and you can just change everything. You in your prime against this person in your prime. Who is it going to be? Where is it going to be? And what's the stipulation of the match? Oh, I don't know. I've never thought about this before. Um... Oh, my God. I gave it to you earlier. I th- I swore you would pick Punk in a blood first blood match. I mean, yeah, that, that would be dope. Um, I mean, I guess like... I don't know. I just, <laughs> that feels so unrealistic. Like I, I couldn't even think of it. Um, well, it's yeah, it's I think, called fantasy booking dear. <laughs> I know, it, just, it feels like that unrealistic though, you know, but yeah, I guess that would be it. That would be dope. And then be really it, dope. where would you want it to happen? Like in your backyard or your house or do, do you want to be the generic answer of Madison square garden? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. That's all right. We'll get back to that someday. We'll get back to that. One, all right. yes. All right. This is your time now. I know, personally, you have a plethora of stuff coming up. You're going to be in and around close to my area, but not close enough. And there's weddings and stupid stuff. But um, what's going on with you here in the near future? 
Um, I am going to be wrestling out a lot in uh, Houston the next couple weeks. Uh, I have Wrestle Rave in Houston uh, this upcoming Saturday. And then on September 3rd, I have uh, PWF in Houston. And then, um, of course, like DCW out in Mobile, Alabama every month. Um, and then uh, Vixen's Wrestling Revolution, which is one of my home promotions uh, out in September. And then I have, yeah, a signing in New Jersey for Legends of the Ring October 1st, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. there, Guys, if you're not, if you're in and around that for the Legends, it's unbelievable the people they have there. Go. Go support everybody because this is huge. I actually I stuttered upon it when I was just looking. I'm like, man, can I just not go to this wedding and can I go to this? And then I didn't know mm-hmm. until I was scrolling through. I'm like, oh my god, she's gonna be on it. And I'm talking to her tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would get killed if I don't go to my cousin's wedding. Yeah, yeah, probably uh, a good idea that you show up for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, merch and your socials. What do you have going on? Can people buy some of your stuff? Yeah, I have uh, shirts and hoodies and stuff like that on whatamaneuver.net. And then if you want to buy an 8x10, you can just hit me up on Instagram, which is uh, amherst.blair, or Twitter, which is amherstblair with an extra R at the end. Did somebody have the other Amherst Blair that you had to add an extra R? I think so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Amherst, it's been great talking to you. Uh, We need to do this again. We need to meet up and just chat about nothing and everything because I I can't wait till you're on dark or you're on impact. This is going to be an answer. This is going to be a question that nobody likes to answer. Is there one, if the money's, everybody's offering you a million dollars right now, just fake money, AEW, Impact, WWE, do you care? Where do you um, go? Originally, it was AEW, but now with WWE kind of taking a turn with Triple H taking over, um, I think my sights are set back on WWE. All right, NXT first or right to the main roster? Oh, I think NXT for sure. I've always had like a big love for NXT since like the very beginning of it. Since black and gold NXT, as we called it, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I agree. Nothing wrong with this one, but uh, that was a little bit more. More. I'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, Amherst. It, it's been amazing, as I said. It's been glamorous, actually, having you on the show. <laughs> Thank you once again, and we'll talk to you real soon. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, glamorous Amherst Blair. What a sweetheart. Ah, oh, I-, I loved it. And again, the dad moment to hear about where Amherst came from. Um, Mom, if you're listening right now, air hug to you because that's awesome. Uh, I I love stories like that. I loved all the wrestling stories too, but the name, yeah, it got me. It it got me in the in the feels. But yeah, how about how about that? And she said I pegged her. I I pinpointed, you know, with the Candice LeRae and Carmella and Ray Jr. She had her own three as well, and. As she was saying them, I could see them too. So, yeah, I'm getting all right with this, uh, guessing some of this stuff. So, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited. Guys, if you're in and around New Jersey here in the near future, head out to Legends. There is a host of people, and it's awesome that Amherst is going to be there. Make sure you follow her on her socials. Head over to What a Maneuver. You guys know What a Maneuver. We're on there, so... When you're buying our stuff, just buy Amherst's stuff too. Get a get a nice, healthy package sent to your house of uh, merch because you'll love it. You'll love wrestling. And I said it with Amherst, wrestling is family. And I love the stories about how everybody in her family goes out to support her. Ah, oh, man. This was definitely a feel-good interview for me. So, yeah. <sighs> Oh, that's it, though, for this week, and I want to tell you guys, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to have a a lot of women on this show. There's another women's revolution coming, and if you guys don't know this, with the indie stars that I'm grabbing and talking to, that they're going to make waves, and as we continue on this podcast journey, this revolution, Amherst is waving that flag. I'm telling you, watch, follow Buy merch and support because here in Can Crushers, we know 
And we know that we know. All right, remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. (laughs) 